In this Tech Byte, I'll be reviewing how to create a mail merge letter using the operation found in the Staff Portal. I'm Elaine Boyd, and I'll be your instructor. The mail merge operation can be found in the Staff Portal. It is found with versions 4.3 or later. You'll find it in the Manage menu item, and there is a column for mail merge. In previous Tech Bytes, I've covered how to build your data source file, how to manage your letter templates, and in this Tech Byte, we'll be reviewing how to print letters and print or send letters and how to print off labels. We're going to start at the top and work our way down through all of the options just to let you know that when you see a red asterisk, that indicates it is a required field. All right, so currently we can do a mail merge using biographical, class attendance, and daily attendance. Coming soon to version 4.4, we're going to be including discipline and grade reporting. So you do have the option of setting a student range and selecting that way who will be receiving the letter, or you can set criteria. Now this criteria will change depending on the template type that you select. So for example, if I click on my biographical mail merge and I set my criteria, it is limited by a biographical field. There they are. I didn't select a letter, so I wasn't sure. So, for example, I could do YOG, and I've got my year of graduation, and I want to generate this letter for those students who have a year of graduation of 2019. So I could have done that through my student range, or I can use a biographical field. Now, if I were to select my attendance totals report, and this time I am going to select my letter. I have my attendance first warning letter, and I'm going to uh, set my criteria. It's going to be quite different. For students in my school, if they, they receive their first warning letter, if they have greater than or equal to five absences. I know some schools will pull in times tardy. Mine's very simple with just that. But here are all of my daily attendance codes, and not all of them I want to have MMS look at to pull in for this letter. There's no need to hold down the control button while you're deselecting things. Family field trip, that's a school activity. We're not going to pull those in. Dismissed, I'm not going to use those medically excused, present, no, suspended, no, and tardy, no. So I have it limited to what codes I want to use. I am going to click OK, and we're all set here. Now, because we are sending a letter based on attendance, we do need to select a date. If it was a biographical based letter, we would not have to enter in a starting or ending date. So I'm going to click always use current date as default and that's going to set my end date, but I do want this to be to go back to the first day of school. So I could have typed in 8-3-2015 or um, you can click on the calendar icon and navigate to the date that way. We are going to select some labels. Labels get uploaded with a template type of label. If you noticed here, you see my, my mailing labels there. Didn't quite load that initially the correct way first, but when you are managing your templates, there is a template type of label down at the bottom of the list and you need to upload your labels that way. So I am going to produce some mail merge labels. Only those students that have the attendance threshold of five absences or more will, will have a, a label generated for them. So this is a way of communicating with the parents and we need to indicate 
which parents are going to receive this letter. So uh, if I click on contact type, my database configuration is set for nine contacts. That is the maximum number of contacts that you can have per student. I do have two parent contacts, so rather than run this letter twice, once for each parent, we do have the ability to select the mailing flag. So as long as the contact is set to yes for mailings, a letter will be generated for each contact. Limit one letter per family. This would be something sent out to like the whole student population, um, how to set up the parent portal letter, something like that. You would want to limit it to just one per family. Where this is an attendance warning letter, you want each kiddo to get the letter sent home to the parent. So we're going to keep that set to no. We don't want to limit. We have the ability to set up our email settings. So I am going to set that up. So I need to check that box. That's going to let them know that I do want to include emails. We have two options here, technically three. We can only send to students' contacts eligible for email. That means they have, yes, I want to receive mailings, and yes, I want to receive emails. Both of those need to be set to yes. With this option, if a parent doesn't have emails being set to them, then they won't receive this letter at all. The second option is for all selected students, we're going to send an email where we can, otherwise we're going to print out a paper copy. And this last option will print a paper copy as well for email recipients, so that with these two checked, emails will go out, but then you will also have a paper copy for all of the students. You are required to enter in an email address. And you do want to put in a subject line. Um, let's see, we have please see the attached letter. Any of these letters that you email out to the contacts will be as an attachment. So I always like to include something in there so that the parents know that they need to open up the attachment to see the information. We do have the ability to create an email log. This will keep track of all the emails that this letter will be going out to and whether it was successful or not in emailing. If we do want to create the log, it will default to a log name. You can rename that if you want. I am not going to create a log this time. So with that set, I can hit close. This is where you would view previously created email logs. Add tracking information. Now if you are just sending the parent portal letter information, so information for the parents on how to create their parent portal account, you probably don't need to track that letter, whereas an attendance letter you do want to track. By entering tracking information, if you produce these warning letters once a month or once a week, once a student has already received that letter, he will not receive it again. He or she will not receive it again. That way, you know, you produce the letter once a week, they hit that threshold of five absences. Well, you know what, Net gonna, he or she is still going to be at that five absences, but they've already received that letter, so you don't really want to include them. I am going to set a tracking number of one. I don't have any tracking numbers set so far. So I am going to track letters being printed or emailed, and then I am going to limit the mailings to letters not previously printed or emailed. You can clear out those tracking letters if you want, that way it's starting all over again. And then you can add a title. There we go, Attendance First Warning Letter. And then you can view previously viewed titles. 
and that is a PDF copy of the actual letter sent and there may be changes made to that because these files are very, very large and depending on the number of times that you send out these letters, it's really becoming quite the data hog. So there are changes being made to this, but currently if you track the letter, it's the actual letter in a PDF document and it, it would be all the students in one document. Before we print, we can save our settings and we have our new and improved settings option here in the staff portal. I already have an attendance total letter saved. I am just going to resave those settings. So I'm going to click on the blue diskette. So now here, if I were to exit out of this and come back in, hit settings, and recall those settings, I can see here a nice little green check mark saying that the, the settings have been recalled. I don't have to set this up each time. It's going to be there for me. So for letters where you send often, saving your settings is a huge time saver. All right, now that we have everything all set up, we have our tracking information, our dates are set. Now we're going to generate our letters and emails. So here are our three tabs. We have our letters. There's two students. We have Charles who had six days absent. And if I scroll down to my next letter, I have Nicole who has five days absent. So those are my two students that will be receiving the warning letter. I have my emails. And my emails are viewed as a PDF attachment and it's one, I mean, I'm seeing both letters as one PDF, but there is a, an informational message here in red saying that all email attachments are sent as individual PDF files. So Linda Albino will see just the letter for Charles, as likewise Ms. Gothier is going to see the letter just for Nicole. And then if I click on my Labels tab, I can see that I have two labels that I can print. If I mouse down to the bottom of the screen, I can see my, my printer settings here. So I can click on the, the print and then print them out. Likewise, when I click back on the letter tab, if I mouse down in that area, there we go, I can print those letters out. When I close, I have two options here. I can close and track. That means if I close and track and I try to generate these letters again, I won't be able to unless I clear out tracking and that will clear out tracking for everybody that's already been tracked with this letter. Or I can close. Say I found a typo in my letter and I need to fix that before I actually send the letters out. In that case, I would want to close, fix my letter, upload to the template manager and then come and produce the, the letters. So when you do close with tracking turned on, MMS will send a warning message to confirm that you have chosen not to track a printed letter because we do have tracking turned on. So if you do want to track the printed letters, please click cancel and then select close and track. So we are going to do that. So we're back here and I'm going to close and track. So if things are going to get printed, you need to print before you hit close and track. So now if I try to generate this letter, no records are found because those two students who qualify have already received the letter and because I have tracking turned on, it's not going to pull those students up. And that is how you use the print, send letters and labels in the staff portal mail merge.